let's talk about Bulgaria. Now, I think one in three students that we talk to either know someone studying in Bulgaria, family member, a neighbor, a doctor. It's become one of the destinations where most students just want to go to. Not far from the UK, they have fantastic medical schools there and they're recognized worldwide. So one school we're talking to you about tonight is Strakia University. This is in the heart of Bulgaria, in a city called Stara Zagora. Now, they teach different uh, programs there. Now, medicine there is for six years. And, of course, taught in English. And then you graduate there as a doctor of medicine. The tuition fees are around 7,500 euros a year. They do have an entrance test there. Now, don't worry. As Victoria mentioned, this is something that we prepare you for. So we provide you with all the materials that you need in preparing and acing that test. And as the guys were talking about this evening, that it might seem that it's quite easier to get into Europe. But make no mistake, the medical schools are tough. Medicine is a tough course to go into. So whilst the university has flexible um, requirements, we also make the, we create a strong file for you because there will be hundreds of students that will be going there. So no matter your grade, let's have a chat and see whether or not you would qualify. Now, applications to track are still open, but don't come to us in August after results day and say, hey, I'm ready. We need to be talking about this right now because the universities this year a lot of things have changed where they require the application a lot sooner. So if track here tickles your fancy, let's have a chat about whether you would qualify. And you can also apply with the prediction grades as well. Now, I can't tell you everything about the school. But what I can do is invite one of our students who's studying there with a third year medical student. Uh, Gavin, are you here? Hello, 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 hello. Can you see me? <clears throat> yes, we can. How are you, Gavin? I'm good. How are you? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for asking. Now, Gavin, can you tell us a bit about kind of your story and pretty much what inspired you to, to get into medicine and how you ended up in Trachia? Okay, no problem. So, um, firstly, uh, I did business and finance in Sheffield um, in England, back home, um, but I hated the office job and I've always been interested in sciences. Um, my dad's a surgeon um, and my sister was studying dentistry in Plovdiv University, which is also a really good university for medicine and dentistry. Um, I applied for Sophia with the help of Osman. I met him. He was a fourth year at the time. Um, and uh, I passed and um, this, there was a bit of discrepancy. Um, and I also applied for Trachea at the same time. Um, I got into both unis and I really... Uh, I really like had to take some time to uh, deliberate which university I wanted to go to. Sophia was like London, Plovdiv was like Manchester, and Star Zagora felt like Sheffield. So I felt more at home in Trachea. It was a more it's a quieter city. It was a lot more um, welcoming to students in the sense that when you're studying in Bulgaria, you're put into groups, and um, your groups are going to be like your family for the rest of the years, the six years. Um, in Plovdiv, you'll be in a group of twenty to twenty-five people, and sometimes you won't even you you won't even get a chance to like answer a question because you're going up against competition being a medical student you're competitive so um stars and stars agora my group's nine people um, and i get to talk to patients help patients and it's just great that's why i'm here wow it seems like you've had a journey actually even getting into to starting medicine what was that switch for you what was it that made you go from wanting to do the course you're doing now to now being in a idea of medicine so being from England and knowing how the English curriculum is, you are, you're comfortable. And I will say you are spoon fed. Like everybody says you're spoon fed and you're comfortable in everything you do and you know how the exam's going to be. Whereas when you come to Bulgaria, when you come into the European countries and you're studying medicine now, it's a bigger leap. You're actually dealing with real life physiology, real life anatomy, and you're learning it so that you can help people. My mom always tells me um, when you're studying, study it so that you are able to help me. And it's just motiva it's motivating that way. So it's like, the exams here work as in you get the topics, you get the syllabus, and you have to study everything. You study by yourself as well as obviously you're taught in class, you're taught in hospitals, you're taught in seminar exams, you have mini tests, you, you're, you're trained to be a doctor. You are trained to do medicine, to learn, to love medicine. And it's, it's, it's really nice when you apply that knowledge in your own way to study because you then realize once you have um, studied and you're passing these exams uh, on your own accord, it's a sense of achievement. And it makes like, you at first you're nervous for these exams and you're, you're pulling up to the exam and everybody's nervous. And now I'm in exam period and I'm, I'm just sat here thinking, I just have to study. I just have to do what I'm training to do right now. And eventually I will just pass these exams and it's, everything works out in your, in your hand eventually. It's funny you say that. That's, that actually ties in perfectly with the question that uh, was asked is, how do you balance, because, you know, studying medicine is very demanding. So how do you balance the, the, the study, work life, some activities? How do you balance all of that, students? Well, uh, one thing I can say is, 
uh, let's say the average day, you have an 8 a.m. wake up call, you've got to be in the hospital, especially in third year, hospital work, hospital, hospital. When you get there, the first thing they do is they sit you down and they teach you the theory. And they teach you the theory so that you've gone through step by step, each things, everything that you need to know. And eventually you understand what you need to know to go and talk to a patient. And obviously the language barrier, you're taught Bulgarian, you're taught how to speak it, how to communicate, and even like the, the GMC level, like ways of talking to a patient. And when everything, once you've just read it, like you can read it one time and you'll understand it because of how you're taught, especially here in Traki. I'm not, I can't speak for the other universities, but here in Traki, it's like, once you're taught it, you understand it and you can apply it straight away. Afterwards, you can come home, do a little bit of reading, and then I play basketball every single day. And I literally live across the road from the park. And I've made Bulgarian friends. I've played for Bulgarian teams. I have played uh, with my friends in, against other universities, like student-run organizations. And eventually, it gets to the point where it's crunch time for the exams. And you just you go back to your apartment, you go back to wherever you're staying, and you just read what you've been taught, you practice what you've been taught, and eventually, You'll go to the exam, the professors will see, the professors, the doctors, the assistant professors, they'll see, I taught this guy well. I know he knows his stuff. Now he just needs to perform. And it, it makes exams so much easier like that. That's great. Thank you. Now, I know it can't just be all great every single day. I'm sure you face some challenges, Dima. What, what's, what's one of the challenges that you kind of faced? And for you, what, what you actually did to overcome this? Well, moving to a different country, moving to a different culture. Um, Bulgaria, when you meet Bulgarians, you realize that it's a very like raw culture. Like they live from the, they grow their own, they make their own wine in the back garden. They like, they have certain standards to uphold and it's very different to how it was in England. So um, one thing I'd say is they've not really seen a lot of people of color, especially in Trakia, because it's like I said, it's the middle in middle of Bulgaria, but they are very welcoming. I'll be walking in the streets and an old man will stop me. I have no, I have no clue what he's saying. But then eventually I hear a few words in Bulgarian that I recognize. He's asking me where I'm from. Why am I, why am I here? And when I tell him, he's like, bravo. It means like, really good. Like, this is amazing. Like, th thank you for being here. It's like, they're really appreciative. And I, know, I would say another challenge is, um, I'd, I would say sometimes the language barrier. For dentistry, like I've, I've noticed that a few, uh, a few people have, um, they have to, for dentistry, you have to find your own patient sometimes. And um, eventually it becomes very easy because the university does help you um, with under understanding how to attract patients and uh, your patients are vital for your, for your learning. But at the same time, especially for me in medicine, you're taught how to handle those situations. And like you make, I've made enough Bulgarian friends to where if I need to find something in Bulgaria by myself, I just have to ring them up. Like I'll give them a message and they'll be there within a few minutes, especially in Stars Agora. It's not the biggest of cities, like I said. So like, I've got a friend who lives outside of the village of um, Star Zagora and he comes and plays basketball. When I, needed, when I needed help moving apartments, he brought his car and he helped me move. So I would say the language barrier is the main thing, but like you're studying medicine, it's easy, it's easy enough to learn another language, you know? Yeah, very, very true. And it, it seems that you've kind of immersed yourself really into the city very well. Um, it seems that we're getting a lot of students this year um, looking to do veterinary medicine, which Turkey actually offers. Uh, is there something you know a bit more about that you can share with us? Um, so, as you can see on this, like on the screen, sometimes you see the big university, and that's like Tracker University. Obviously, they have medicine and veterinary, but they also have economics and whatnot for the Bulgarian students. And the veterinary course is actually held at the main campus. So you, it's on a little like it's about a ten minute bus drive, um, and you are at the university. And from the veterinary friend, like the vet friends that I've made, um, they say it's pretty much similar to exactly similar to what medicine do, but the medics do, but like. With animals so things i've heard it like it's amazing you can see on the screen like you see them up there operating on horses you are there you are actually there gloves on and helping them and helping the doc the veterinary doctors do that work i've heard friends in third year have helped cows give pre um, like pregnant cows give birth uh, pregnant horses give birth they see such a variety of different animals as well so like things i've heard from my veterinary friends in the uk they mainly handle reptiles and um cats and dogs and pets and whatnot and they do learn about other and other animals, but obviously, what animals are in England that you get to see? Here in Trachea, I've I've seen and heard that the, um, in the pathology, when you have to do like the uh, actual looking at the uh, of the animals that have passed away, you see dolphins, you see um, camels, you see people things that have been brought to Bulgaria because Trachea University is the best for veterinary school in Bulgaria. It's genuinely like it's crazy to hear the things that I've heard. Um, and they, they they love life like we're all like because we're all from England and we're all from Ireland and we're all speaking English all English courses every time there's an English event the vets and the medics come together and like everybody's friends so we help each other out and uh, to be honest uh, as much as I do miss home it's, it's a good experience that's brilliant that's something we actually always say here is that the happiest students rarely come home they maybe come home 
a few times a year, but they barely come home, which is a great sign that you're, you're having a great time whilst you're there. Now, I know, Gavin, last question for you. It must have not just been easy making that decision, just packing your bags and going. You probably were apprehensive, you were anxious about it, um, excited at the same time. Any advice that you have the, the students or even some of the parents that are listening about wanting to send their kids or even the students that are listening, any advice you have for them about being worried about taking that step? So uh, one thing I will say is a lot of people, a lot of people were worried about uh, are worried about the safety in Bulgaria. And as soon as I landed, obviously I had family here, I had my cousin, I had my sister studying in Plovdiv, um, and I just thought, and I was I was nervous to go to Chostar Zagora by myself. And as I got in the taxi, there's a taxi driver that we knew speaks English, and he took my number and he drives me everywhere I need to go in Bulgaria. And he, one thing he told me was, how many things on the news do you hear about London and Manchester, even Sheffield? How many things do you hear? And I said a lot. And one thing he was he spoke to he told me was how many things do you hear about Bulgaria? You don't. And to be honest, it's very safe. And I would say that also when you're thinking about taking that step, I was leaving family, I was leaving my girlfriend, I was leaving everything. I was, I was literally leaving everything behind. But when you when you leave for medicine in England, you're leaving everything behind as well. You're not going to be going home because in medicine in England, you're at the hospital 24-7. You're working as a doctor and learning on the job. But here they give you that theoretical knowledge that is oh, like gives you that edge over students in England, um, especially like students that I've met uh, back home who are my friends who are studying medicine. They they don't have all that theoretical knowledge that I've been taught. Um, so like you're taking a risk coming to a different country, having a language barrier, but you're opening more doors to opportunity. Like because you're an international student, people want to work with you. They want to give you that experience to do research. Like I've had friends complete research with the university in biochemistry. I myself have had... Um, in your in Europe in general, um, I myself have had um, I've had uh, research in cardiothoracic surgery um, it, with people from Leeds and people from Sheffield, and it's it's actually like it's opened me opened so many more doors to me. Especially when I come home and I see a patient who is Bulgarian, I've studied a bit of Bulgarian. I can communicate with them. When I went to um, Sheffield University as well, uh, Sheffield Hospital as well, um, for some experience when I got back, some of the surgeons said it's brilliant that you've gone to Europe, especially Bulgaria, especially Poland, in fact. Um, and Czech Republic as well, because a lot of them have said that the students that have come to them, they want to be medics, whereas the, like the, in Sheffield Uni, they had 70% pass rates being um, turning into GPs. So they have a, they have less um, su surgeons, et cetera, et cetera. So like coming to Europe, it really gives you that confidence over people who have just learned in English. You're learning everything from the origin, the the Latin, the, um, the language itself. Um, you're taking that time and extra effort to make yourself a better person as well as a better doctor. And it gives you those morals to work hard because not everybody has to be smart to become a doctor, but you have to be able to have that sacrifice to work hard and give yourself those options so that you can become the better doctor and achieve where you want to get when you're competing with other people that have graduated from Cambridge. It doesn't mean anything at that point because you've worked hard and you know you're a good doctor. Gavin, I think uh, it's, I, I, everyone here will agree that uh, you've been very inspiring for us tonight and, and thank you so much. I know it's exam period for all of you guys. So thank you so much for joining us and we can't wait to see what the future lies ahead for you when you come back to the UK to practice. Thank you once again. No problem. Thank you. Have a good night.